Welcome to A Vapor's Journey. I'm Jason Hughes at Xavier Penguin Studios, now powered by Move to Vapor. This is episode two, getting started. As we discussed in previous episodes, there's lots of reasons to go ahead and look at vaping as an alternative to smoking tobacco. Now we're going to take a look at what that looks like. Allow me to introduce the KR-808 battery. You may have seen this guy in your local convenience store, you might have seen him at the gas station, you might have seen him online. Uh, there are devices that are very similar out there, such as the Blue electronic cigarette. It's a very popular device, and one of the first things I'm going to tell you is, no matter what electronic device you go with, if you find something that's working for you, don't think that you need to run out and grab the next biggest, baddest, cloud chasingest thing. If it's working for you, you're staying off tobacco, you're happy with the device, keep using that device. That said, let's go ahead and talk about, you know, what the initial cigarette analog devices are composed of, uh, comprised of, may be a better way of saying that, but what does this look like? How do I get started? When I made my first journey into vaping as an alternative to cigars, as we talked about before, I kind of looked at this and I went, that's going to be a little piddly for me. But one of the reasons why these are the size and shape of a cigarette is most of the smoking transition is psychological as opposed to chemical. You're getting your nicotine. Therefore, the addiction, the nicotine craving is handled. The next things that you got to get over are the psychological pieces. It needs to look like a cigarette, feel like a cigarette, taste like a cigarette, cigarette. Your mind needs to think cigarette when you pick this up. That's a major component in being successful when you move from tobacco to vaping. I'm repeating myself a little bit. Bear with me. So what are we dealing with here? We've got the battery piece, which the batteries typically come with some sort of charger. In this case, this is a USB charger that I simply screw my battery into. My light will turn green when it's charged, red when it needs charged, and turn green again when it's fully charged. So that's one of the basic pieces. The other piece is your cartomizer. The cartomizer contains a little bit of batting, the fluid, the uh, little bit of wire that generates the heat that vaporizes that fluid. So how is this different from some of the big, huge OP devices that you'll see? What about 900 milliamp hours? What about variable voltage? What about... We'll get there. This is what we're dealing with. When I take these two components and I put them together, I now have an electronic cigarette. This one happens to have an automatic... Uh, uh, we'll have to edit that. This one happens to have an airflow control switch. That airflow control switch is what activates it. So when I inhale, light comes on at the end, I get vapor. Let's try it. Is this a fog machine? No. But is that a decent puff of vapor? Absolutely. Before I knew any better, or before I moved on to other devices, that was a very reasonable amount of vape to blow. Uh, it was a good mouthful. It felt like what the kind of non-deep inhale that I would take with my cigars. And there you go. Okay. So, what makes this something that, you know, maybe some stores wouldn't carry, or what? what is the stigma that comes with these little guys? Why is it that people don't like these as much? Well, here's the limitations. This is a 280 milliampere hour battery. What's that mean? That means that at any given time, the only amount of power that I can throw at this is equal to 280 milliamps. What, if I was on a constant draw, that wouldn't last very long. So, an average vapor, pack-a-day smoker, is going to catch somewhere between two, two and a half, three hours worth of linear vape time. Meaning, I pick this thing up at eight in the morning, by, let's go ahead and round it up, we'll call it 11 o'clock in the morning, this battery's about dead. I may not necessarily be out of fluid, but my battery's going to be toast. I need to have at least another one of these in order to see me through the day, or to be able to recharge, or something like that. Yay, charger. So as far as somebody who's a heavy vapor, heavy smoker, while it's important to start with a thing that looks like a cigarette, feels like a cigarette, acts like a cigarette, you're going to need multiple batteries. A lot of kits contain at least two. 
it's a good way to start, or you may already be looking at a larger battery, depending on how much you're smoking. Let's go ahead and give this one more vape. Now your next question is going to be, okay, great, but what about that thing? What about that cartomizer? A cartomizer, typically in this format, holds one milliliter of juice. At 16 milligrams to the milliliter, I'm looking at a half a pack of smokes. So two of these equals one pack of smokes. Okay, what happens? I vape this out. It starts to lose its vape. It starts to lose its flavor a little bit. Is it done? No. And this is something that I really want to point out to all you people who are picking up these uh, the convenience store electronic cigarettes, the blue modules where, you know, they have the little replaceable atomizers. You're going to spend however many dollars per cardomizer. You can refill these people. You can refill them. Trust me. I'm going to show you how. What I've got here is a dry cardo. A lot of stores carry the dry cardomizer, so you can put whatever your fl uh, favorite juice is into it. Now, if you happen to buy the blue or you happen to buy something else that's already pre-filled, I strongly recommend if you've got a tobacco flavor, go ahead and reload with a tobacco flavor. Because if you reload your tobacco flavor with fruit punch, you don't know what uh, end of the donkey that's coming out of. Just letting you know. Sorry to steal your phrase, Mr. Penguin. But this is how we fill. We grab our weapon of choice. This happens to be my move to vapor fluid. And this is called the sock method. You take a little bit of your juice right into that sock. You're going to fill that puppy up about three quarters of the way. I'm going to take the mouth end of this and plunge it right on down. Careful not to block the air hole on the top. Notice I'm getting a little bubblage. That's okay. That basically means that I am now getting air up into the air tube that runs down the middle of this, that's surrounded by the batting, surrounded by the wire, no big deal. When I dislodge this, I'm going to want, yeah, sorry for popping in and out of frame, I'm going to want a paper towel, because I've now got juice all over this thing. I'm going to wipe it off. And remember that air hole I was talking about? You're going to want to clear that. You don't clear that the first time you vape on this, you're going to get a shot of juice in the mouth, and... We're not going to talk about that. I blow down, clear out my air tube. Guess what? I'm now good to vape. I have successfully reloaded a cartridge. And I'm vaping. So, for the person just getting started, this is going to be the type of equipment that you deal with. The advantages are the psychological disconnect, it gives you time to get over the fact that you're not actually holding a cigarette. Downside is limitation of runtime and how much juice you're actually packing. So, all right, I get that. I understand, Jason. You want me to do the mental disconnect of looks like cigarette, acts like cigarette, tastes like a cigarette. What if I really just am not getting satisfied because I don't have the power, I'm having to constantly mess with this thing? Okay, fine. We're going to take it up a notch, a big notch. What we have here, this is a variable voltage, large capacity battery. This one happens to be 1100 milliampere hours. That's almost five times the capacity of the little guy that I just showed you. What's the advantages here? Well, an 1100 milliampere hour battery should vape about eight to 10 hours linear runtime for a pack a day smoker. That's a lot of not having to charge. That's very cool. This particular device happens to use the 510 thread style. You're going to see that in a lot of your pro shops. Most vaping locations will have atomizers, tanks, what have you, for a 510 format. Some will have their own special proprietary stuff. Move to Vapor both carries 510 and 808. Some stair, uh, stores are only 510. Some are doing even weirder stuff, but hey, whatever. This battery supports 510 and the Ego Cone threading. Okay, what's this? This is a tank with an atomizer. This is called an EBC, which is a bottom coil, bottom feeding, basic tank. You can usually find these pretty inexpensively. They're not too far in distance from these guys as far as price. A couple of bucks here, a couple of three, four, five bucks here. 
this guy is going to be completely dead and useless no matter how many times I refill him after about 10 days. This guy is going to be good as long as I keep him filled and until what point that the atomizer finally does give up the ghost. And they will. Think about it. You're heating a piece of metal and that piece of metal is going to go bad. This is an atomizer. This atomizer screws into the base of the device and it provides the coil of wire and the batting and the fluid conductivity that produces our vapor just like it does in every device. Every device has something like this. Whether it's exposed, whether it's replaceable, whether it's not, the atomizer is simply the wire and batting and the juice combination where the voltage causes the heat. So this little guy is easily assembled, easily filled. Why do I want this instead of Cardo's? Well, I've got a lot more fluid going on here. I'm not having to fill this as often. I've probably got two packs of two packs of uh, uh, smokes equivalent in here. That makes them useful. Couple that with my battery, and I am good to go for a good long while. Let's go ahead and vape it. Once again, not a huge plume of smoke, but still respectable. It gives you that nice. I've had something to smoke, feel in the mouth, your juice is going to determine your throat hit, if you deep lung inhale, all that kind of stuff is going to be dependent on your vape style, how you used to smoke, what did you used to do. Now this battery has the advantage of variable voltage. This is something that you're going to see a lot when you're kind of going into that intermediary step. What's variable voltage? It's exactly what it sounds like. It's the ability to dial up or dial down the voltage that's applied to the atomizer. We're going to have to talk stats and numbers here eventually, but I'm going to go over this at a very high level. We'll do more information on this later. But the point and purpose of variable voltage is dependent on some other factors. The higher you run the voltage, the more vape you get out of the device. The lower you run the voltage, the longer your atomizer is going to last. Dialing in for the perfect vape is really going to be dependent on a few key factors. One, what device do you have? Two, how good's the airflow? And three, what is the resistance of your atomizer? Whoa, 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 Jason, you just blew my mind. What's resistance? For any of you that don't know, the resistance of electricity through any conduit is called the Ohm's impedance, Ohm's law. So basically what happens is that as the electricity tries to move through this coil, it's generating heat because that movement of the electrons is resisted. Makes sense? So, as I dial up the voltage, I'm getting more heat because I'm forcing more electricity through the same pipeline. Now, you'll notice that different vendors are going to carry atomizers in different ohms ratings or resistance ratings. In this guy, I've got a 1.8 ohm atomizer. Why is that good? What does it mean? Typically, the higher the resistance, the higher the heat. So a 2.5 ohm resistance atomizer is going to run hotter than my 1.8 ohm at the same voltage. We'll try and put something up in the comments about Ohm's Law, helping you figure that out. Maybe I'll get a little more descriptive there later. But with the 1.8 ohm impedance, I need to run a little more voltage than I normally would to get the same amount of heat. I've got this guy turned up to 4.2 volts. It's a little on the high side for your normal atomizer, but still in the safe limit. If I ran it really high at the full 4.8 volts that this battery is capable of, I'd get a huge plume of smoke, but very little runtime. I could probably go so far as to burn it out in a few vapes. I don't want to do that. I don't recommend it. There's a few apps online that will help you figure out that sweet spot between voltage and impedance. So we're going to take a look at another kind of variable voltage. Now we're looking at an advanced PV, in this case a Smoke Tech Ace. Very similarly to the little guy that I just showed you a moment ago, we've got variable voltage. I can turn it up and turn it down 
with these buttons, it is regulated, whereas it was not regulated in the other device. So as the battery gets lower, the circuitry compensates to a degree. When the battery gets too low, the device shuts off. I am also using what's called a Nautilus tank by Aspire. Yes, this is genuine. What happens here is that we're dealing with another pre-built device that carries an atomizer, carries a larger amount of fluid, but this time we've got something with a variable airflow. There's a little ring right here that corresponds to pre-drilled little punches in the device, and that helps me increase my airflow. Okay, why does that matter? Better airflow, better cloud, with a better atomizer. That's the formula. Some people like a restrictive kind of a tighter draw. I, as I've moved and progressed further, I actually like a looser draw. I like to be able to get more vape in my mouth and lungs and all that, as opposed to uh, a really tight draw where I feel like I'm having to really inhale on it just to get it to get it to vape. So I tend to run this wide open. Now, once again, variable voltage is very cool stuff if you're paying attention. I'm using a 2.0 ohm atomizer in here. I'm running it right around, whoop, I just turned it up. I run this right around 3.8 volts. Let's see what a vape looks like. A little more cloud than we had before. Well, again, we're dealing with something with better atomizer in it, more airflow, they can handle more voltage. Is this for the newbie? No, it's not. This is intermediate gear. This is not something that I recommend that somebody run right out and buy. Why am I showing you this? So that way you can understand why people run out and grab the biggest, baddest thing. There are shops out there that are going to unfortunately see a newbie, see a dollar sign on their forehead, and reach for that dollar sign instead of looking to help somebody. Hopefully some of this information helps you a little bit. I do have a couple of more things I want to show you, such as a mechanical. Mechanical mods are very, very cool. They are not variable voltage. They are set voltage. It's whatever's in the battery. They tend to use larger batteries, like this rechargeable 18650, and the whole draw to the uh, very, or, I'm sorry, the whole draw to the mechanical mod is just that. There's very little to fail. There's no circuitry involved. It's generally some sort of push button or magnetic contact. And that's the battery I'm using. This is an all day, maybe multiple day vape for a pack a day smoker. So that's the big draw. This, this battery discharges at a rate of 2100 milliampere hours for a total discharge rate of 30 amps. A lot of power here. This is nothing to be scared of. This is very cool stuff. Uh, you may have heard, you know, oh, well, the mechanical mods are dangerous. You can really hurt yourself. Uh, you're, you're just asking for it. Some guy's blown his hand, face, monkey, off, whatever. While it is possible to cause yourself harm with a mechanical mod, it's only if you're really trying to, <laughs> honestly. Uh, mechanical mods themselves are completely innocuous. They're, they're not going to cause you a problem. It's just another way of doing the same thing. The people who have hurt themselves were doing things they shouldn't have been doing, like mismatching their, uh, their batteries to their device or trying to stack batteries that weren't the same type. Um, you know, maybe as a kid you took some half dead and fully charged batteries, mixed them up, and you got lead or you know battery acid everywhere. You know, it happens. The people that blow up their devices are trying to do something called sub ohming. Sub ohming can be very cool, and if you're not well versed in what you're doing, it can be a little bit dangerous. I don't recommend a newbie go out and do sub ohming. I'm sure at some point you and I will talk about it. And we'll go on and maybe even try and do a sub-ohm build someday. But I don't think we're there yet. This mechanical device, getting back to it, has a simple push button. That button applies the voltage to our 510 connector. I happen to have a rebuildable tank here. 
But that doesn't mean a hill of beans. I can use whatever tank I want on the him right on there, no problems. Just because you have a mechanical mod does not mean that you have to run out and start worrying about building your own coils or trying to sub ohm or cloud chase or no. You vape what you like. And it's completely happy because of the coils, because of Ohm's law. I'm not doing anything dangerous running a mechanical mod. Now I am going to talk a little bit about that next step, going from a pre-built, manufactured sort of device to my K-Fun clone. You may have heard of the K-Fun. It's part dripper, part tank. I like the fact that I can have something that has a juice reservoir, but gives me the you know, cloud experience and gives me the flavor profile of a dripper. Drippers give you great clouds, give you great flavor profile, they're a pain in the butt to build, and every time you want to use it, you're dripping a few drops, getting your vape on, a few more drops, getting your vape on, maybe one more, more drops. That's the downside of a dripper. Now this K-Fun, like I said, we'll do a teardown and rebuild one of these uh, when I start re doing additional reviews. Uh, this one is a rebuildable. I had to make the coil myself, which once I'd done a few, wasn't so bad. It's using cotton wicking. It's bringing fluid into this uh, into the device. It vapes it. This is how she goes. Fairly decent cloud. Now the K Fun, in my opinion, is a pretty restrictive device. As you uh, heard me say earlier, I like something with a wide open airflow. There are different devices. There's a hundred ways of doing what we're doing here. My whole point to everything I want to talk to you about tonight is that in getting started, don't feel like you have to run out and buy your Ego 900 battery, your iTaste MVP, the VTR. You don't have to go and buy that great big bulky device to start unless you want to. There's no reason not to except to make sure that it's something you're going to stick with. And the easiest way to beat that psychological disconnect, that fear that you get of, ooh, ooh, I'm quitting, uh, ugh, I don't know how I feel about this. You're not quitting. You're just moving over to a different delivery system. You're still getting your nicotine. You're still doing what you've enjoyed thus far. You're just doing it in a better, safer way. That's my opinion, and that's how I feel about it. So, in summary, Start out with something small and easy that's going to make sense to you, something that you can get used to. Then if you decide to move up to something variable voltage, maybe something tank-like, just meet, you marry your needs to what you're comfortable with, and you'll always have success. Find a flavor that works for you. Find a nicotine level that's satisfying to you. Find a device that you, you can carry around and maintain. Don't make it like, you know, my wife and her cell phone, who, sh who very rarely has the thing charged. Sorry, honey. You know, make it something that you're going to keep on hand, something that you're going to be satisfied with. I mean, as, uh, as my vaping experience progresses, the devices get bigger and bigger and crazier and crazier. And, you know, we start getting into the drippers. We start getting into bigger and bigger batteries. We get into cloud chasing. But it's because this is my hobby. It's not what I have to do to stay off tobacco. Here's, the, here's to the best of luck for you. Let's have one more vape. I really need to reload this guy. This is Jason with A Vapor's Journey. I know I've th thrown a lot of information at you. Feel free to ask me questions, leave comments. Definitely come and visit us at Move to Vapor. Visit your local shop. Get the details. Like I said, all I can do is give you high-level overviews of this stuff. But uh, we'll keep moving forward. Here's to the journey. Have a good night.